Welcome to the RegPack Form Overview. This tutorial will help you get comfortable with creating and editing the forms that make up your registration process. Let's begin by going over the elements of forms. You'll see that each set of forms has a category. Since we're in a group or family system, we'll see one category for the head or parent level and one category for the subunit or child level by default. Feel free to create additional forms or categories by clicking here but note that in group or family systems, all of the head level forms must come before the subunit level forms. You can access system forms such as your dashboard, create account, and login forms by clicking on the system category to expand here. Under each category, you will see a list of forms with a panel that provides form information. This purple lightning bolt is called a trigger or a conditional logic in our system that makes the form add to the user's list of forms. If the lightning bolt is purple, that means the form already has a trigger that you can view or edit by clicking on it. All forms must have a trigger. If there is no special logic you'd like to add, then you will find the correct trigger under registration. User account created is the logic used for head level forms or for individual systems, and child created is the logic used for subunit level forms in a group or family system. Feel free to explore other triggers to customize who sees which forms. This red circle means that the form is mandatory and must be filled out before a user's registration can be considered complete. Note that this does not mean it will force them to fill out those fields. This label will tell you whether your form is a parent or child form. This does not apply to individual systems. This progress bar and number shows you how many of your registrants have completed this form. Let's hover over a form and click Edit Form Properties. This is the same pop-up you will see when you're creating a new form. It allows you to determine what this form is going to do. Choose a form's category and name here. Make a form mandatory or non-mandatory here. You can set a form to lock upon completion so that a user cannot come back to it by turning this on. If you wish to prevent users from moving forward unless mandatory fields have been completed on this form, turn this on. If you'd like to create a form that's in a user's list of forms but is only accessible to admins, you can mark it admin only here. This is especially useful for things like keeping attendance or notes. If you'd like for a form to not be available until a certain date or after a certain date, you can add an availability or expiration date here. If your form is just some text, for instance, you may want to change when the form is completed to say that the user must view it first since the system defaults to filling out all fields, files, and payments. Since none of those things exist on a text form, this might be good to change. More often than not, this setting will not be touched. When editing the fields of a form, you can determine everything your users are going to see. You can add fields to the form multiple ways, by dragging and dropping them into your form, or by hovering over them and clicking Add Top or Add Bottom to add it to the top or bottom respectively. Let's touch on each field. The short answer field is great for capturing things like names and cities. The long answer field is a larger text box and can be used for things like long answers or an address. Number restricts users to only entering numbers into this field. This is great for age, for instance. You can turn this into a drop-down sequence of numbers or make it a text box limited to numbers. Phone allows you to capture a phone number. You can set this to one big text box or three spaced out boxes. Email captures an email address. Note that any email address captured in one of these fields can be used to send emails to under settings and emails. Date can be used to capture things like a date of birth or a date of a flight. You can change this to a month, date, year dropdown, or a calendar. Format the date here. A multiple choice field can create a dropdown, radio, or checkbox option for your users. Type in the values here and choose your selection type here. A yes and no field will create a radio multiple choice field with two options that you can change the value of. The single checkbox is just that, an item that they can check. The countries dropdown provides a default list of countries for your users to select from for things like an address. You can choose major countries or all countries here. eSign authorization provides a space to capture an e-signature at the bottom of the form. This will capture an IP address and a timestamp when users click agree and go to next step. Note that the additional confirmation step is required. You can edit the labels of the eSign authorization here. Add a title to a section or form here. Add a subtitle here. A separator can be used as a divider for sections. The free text box is quintessential. Use this to create any sort of instructions or text you'd like to appear. You can use the rich text editor to customize it to your liking. Note that you can also add tokens to extract information from forms here. This is great for things like adding someone's name to a form or adding their cart amount. 
the Payments and Orders widgets will extract information from the respective Settings tab. Add an Upload widget here to allow users to upload information. View our other tutorials for additional questions on setting up reports, emails, products, and other items, and don't forget to reach out to our lovely support team at support at regpacks.com if you need any assistance.